Well, certainly with wolves, um, there are those that would, would like to see none. And then, of course, we know that with wolves, there are those that would like to see, you know, see them in, in many places or all over. It is true, we've been several generations now really without the presence of wolves. And, uh, and returning them has been a, been a pretty interesting process. Anybody that's in food production should be encouraged to be in food production. Putting them at risk in terms of wolves or any other factor is very irrational in the long term and could be very detrimental when you scale it up throughout the country and the world to providing enough food for the future population of this planet. I'm Dennis Sheehy. I'm a rancher here, run beef cattle up on a federal grazing allotment. Most of the ranching community that exists in Wallowa County, it's not a conglomerate ranching, it's small family ranches. Often the ranches, the families have been here for 150 years. Uh, it's a vital part of the community, county economy. We've already lost the, the timber industry, almost 100%. When the Oregon Endangered Species Act was created, wolves at the time were federally listed and Oregon made a, a tacit decision to include federally listed species that could or have occurred in Oregon, wolves are a native species to Oregon, to add that onto the list. So they, they became state listed at that time. So really we, we haven't put them on a list recently. Um, we're more in a situation where they're on the list and, and state law requires certain uh, criteria to be met before they can be removed from the list. In 1995, there was, wolf, there was uh, wolves released in Idaho, Montana, and uh, Yellowstone Park in Wyoming. Uh, it was around 2005 or 6 that the first wolf actually came into, that we know that a wolf came into Oregon. And since that time, up until today, we've had 28 confirm, probable or confirmed kills. Wolves are, they're a dog and they, and they just bite and finally when that animal gets so exhausted that they lay down, they just gut them and go to chewing on them. At least, you know, a cat or a cougar or a bear, when they attack something, they grab it and they kill it and then they eat it. That we recognize that there's going to be wolves here and so what we're asking the public and our politicians and our OD, the Department of Fish and Wildlife is to allow us to manage these wolves and part of that management is doing lethal control on wolves that depredate on livestock. Uh, a lot of this it depends on geography, uh, where these wolves are and, and I think we've clearly acknowledged, we acknowledge in our plan and I think functionally on the ground we acknowledge that there will probably be places that wolves try to make a home and it's just not going to work. An example of that would be Oregon's first pack. In 2009, we had two wolves that, that set up, actually not very far from here, um, on those, just on those foothills over there. We got into a chronic depredation system, we re, or a situation, and we removed those wolves. We also know that there are cases where there may just be very little evidence, there very little remaining, and, and certainly we acknowledge in many of those cases the possibility that wolves were involved. And what, what our plan says and what the Oregon Administrative Rules outline is that we can issue a permit that allows a producer to take an animal, to shoot an animal, for example, that is actually in the act of attacking. It's sort of a being able to protect your livestock. And so there's about uh, 29 ranchers that have those permits, which allow you, if you catch a wolf, biting or wounding one of your animals, you can shoot that wolf. But you, if you shoot that wolf, you have to prove that he 
wounded or killed one of your livestock. It's, it's very rare to catch a wolf. Uh, you know, mostly they're nocturnal. Most wolf depredations happen at night, um, we know. And so it's, it's not common to find one or catch one in the act of attacking. And that's a, that's a difficulty for some folks. In a sense, with a kill permit, you can protect your property, but it's, it's not going to do you too much good unless you're awful unlucky. What we're wanting is that, that if, they, they ch if we catch them in the, just chasing or in our livestock, that we can shoot those wolves. The state did pass legislation that there should be compensation paid for livestock losses. A number of the environmental groups, Defenders of Wildlife and uh, Oregon Wild and several others had considerable influence and got it watered down, in my opinion. Personally, I, I know some of these environmental groups, have they helped stop logging. They uh, came after us with endangered fish. They come after us with uh, threatened plants. So, um, and those groups, I truly believe, they're out, they do not want to see uh, natural resource use done on the ground, whether that's done on public land or private land. It's often believed that there are two camps and, and people, most people are in one camp or another, whether you don't want wolves at all, or there's really quite a lot of Oregonians that are really in that middle, that middle ground. Most people want to see responsible management. They want to see science-based management, and we hear that all the time. Um, they want to see uh, their, their state wildlife agency work on a consistent scientific approach. Um, that, that still addresses concerns, needs, and real problems. You know, if you, if you really boil it down, wolves are just another wildlife species, and they're difficult in many ways because of the, of the high, highly polarized environment or the high levels of emotion, but they still just are another, another predator. You know, can wolves be managed? And my answer is absolutely. Um, we can manage, we managed them out of existence once, you know, now we've managed them, we as a society have managed them back into existence. And I really think what, what the question really lies in is what is management to you or to, to people? Some folks have real things to lose and some folks uh, uh, don't. And at the same time, we still have to balance all those needs. That's, that's the real key.